Hi, I'm Kathy Yaffa with School Spotlight. Welcome today to our visit to the Cove Elementary School. And I'm going to get myself buzzed in and check in in the office. And I'll meet you in the lobby with the principal, Mrs. Lisa Oliver. Well, I'm here now <clears throat> at the Cove Elementary School with the principal, Mrs. Lisa Oliver. And she's going to tell us a little bit about the great things that we're going to see here today at the Cove. Thank you. Welcome to Cove School. Presently, we are a K-5 to school, and we have approximately 475 students with us, and we are growing. Next year, we anticipate having at least 500. So welcome. Today, when you are visiting our classrooms, you'll be seeing a special staff member that we added this year, and her name is Serenity, and she's a therapy dog that lives with our special education teacher, Jennifer Bent, and she's from the Needs Corporation, and she's part of our positive culture here at Cove, and she works with all students, so I'm excited for you to get to see her. In addition, you'll be seeing Changes Simple, which is an environmental educational nonprofit company that has been working with the Cove School and other schools in Beverly for two years now. And they use the Common Core frameworks and they come in and do very exciting environmental lessons with the students. They make sure that it is hands on and it's something that they will always remember in order to effectively work within the environment and make it a positive place to live. Well, thank so you. Thank that you. sounds really very exciting. So we get to see a therapy dog. I can hardly wait. I love dogs. And we get to see an environmental lesson. So let's go visit those classrooms. This is a morning group that um, the occupational therapist and I, um, Mrs. King, and myself run with four boys. Um, two first graders and two second grade boys with Serenity. Um, and today our group will focus on um, helping the students to think about where their engine, where their energy level is during different times of the day, um, and then help to introduce and teach some strategies for them um, around how they can self-regulate their activity levels. Well, I'm here now with Mrs. Bent and Serenity, and we are going to view Serenity on the job, and uh, Mrs. Bent will explain to us later exactly what is going to be Great. going on. Okay. Thank you. Take it over. Thank you. Awesome. So we're going to talk about different um, times of the day and how your engine would feel, or how you think your engine would, would feel or be, and then you're going to toss a bone, Serenity's bones. with Serenity's bones, into the hoop that has a high engine, a, a just right engine, or Where's a low engine. Nice. All right. I'm lost. Here, Ryland, you're up. So are you still on super low? Yep. Super low? Super low. Not just low, super Empty. low. Empty! Empty! Yeah. Whoa! Okay. What's the next step? Anthony, if you're waiting for another yeah. turn, you need to be in your space. Okay. Okay. Catch. Now I'm here with Jennifer Bent, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the therapy dog program here at the Cove School. Um, the therapy dog has been working very hard today. You can see she's taking her, her nap before her next session. <laughs> um, Jennifer, when was the dog introduced to the school and how did it come about? Well, we um, brought her to, to Cove um, in September. I had the experience of, or the opportunity to um, see a therapy dog in action um, at a residential program uh, for adolescent boys and girls. Um, and I just fell in love with the idea of bringing um, something like that to um, school and you know incorporate her into my work with students um, so we last year last school year ended up doing some fundraising um, she came from an organization called needs um, and they um, 
you know, train the dogs for the clients. But we raised money to bring her here, and over the summer, I was able to go out and train with her after they matched her with us, and she started here in September. So she works with all students. Um, but what was your role in the school system? What What is your oh, title? I'm a um, special education teacher. Okay. So. And in, this, in the class we saw this morning, you were working with the occupational therapist. Yes. Okay, so you work with some of the specialists, but the dog also goes into regular classrooms. Yep, she okay. does. She, um, because of my role in the building and being a special ed teacher and working with, you know, different grade levels, um, she does work with some kids in this classroom, but we also go into um, the regular ed classrooms to work with students as well. Um, all students have access to her, so she um, really does whatever um, the student needs at that time. Uh, she, you know, kids read to her. She walks kids to their classrooms when they're having, if they're having a tough morning, um, and she just provides, you know, an emotional comfort for students um, if they need it. And tell us a little bit more about what we saw today in the occupational therapy setting. You were working with students trying to um, regulate their energy level yeah. <laughs> and such. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, lessons that you do in connection with occupational therapy. Yep. Well, today, she um, that, was, that happened to be a group that we work with once a week, uh, myself and the occupational therapist. And today, she actually did a number of things in our session. She um, served as a model. Um, for the activity as to what we were trying to do with the students as they were sitting on the cushions, um, tossing the toy bone, which we have here, um, and then show, you know, modeling going through the tunnel uh, for the students as they were doing their motor activity. Um, she also, we were able to um, show the students how her energy level was um, by using the engine. Um, or the speedometer, rather. Oh, yeah, um, let's take a look at that. So the students, you know, were able to look at this and determine how they were feeling, you know, at different times throughout the day. Um, but Serenity also was able to demonstrate her low engine, her just right engine, and her high speed engine um, for the students as well. So that also served a purpose. Um, and then at the end, as students were, um, as we were kind of winding down and, and um, helping the students regulate themselves to be able to go back into their classroom, she served as a reward for students that were meeting the expectation of sitting quietly on the bean bags. She was able to sit, you know, next to the students, and they could pat her, and she could give them kisses, and you know, things like that. So. Well, I have to tell you, when I walked in the door, the first thing she did was to bring me one of these. <laughs> she, so that was a welcoming <laughs> gift, I think. She was very well trained. She, if I drop things on the floor, even at home, she runs right over and picks them up for me. So. She knows what to do with these, that's for sure. Tell us a little bit about her training. She, like I had mentioned before, came from an organization called NEEDS, which is based out of uh, Princeton, Mass, uh, or Sterling, Mass. Uh, she, the organization is NEEDS, so it's National Education for Assistance Dog Services, and they match dogs with different clients. Um, they match dogs for people who have disabilities. Um, they match dogs with ministers. They're called ministry dogs. They do classroom dogs, which Serenity is considered a uh, classroom dog, and then they do um, social dogs for kids who um, might require that type of assistance. She was actually trained, that's very interesting, she was trained um, as part of the prison pup program, so she was trained at Framingham um, MCI prison. Wow. Um, they have a program where the trainers from needs go into the prisons and work with the dogs and the inmates um, as part of this program. So they train, um, the inmates actually train the dogs, um, and then when needs matches the dog with the client for the specific job that they're going to do, um, the client, which was myself, goes out and trains um, with the dog to learn the commands and things like that. So it's a fairly long process from um, the dog coming, um, I believe she went to the prison about at about four months of age, and then she left the prison, um, I think, it was about 14 or 15 months old. So they spend about oh, yeah. a year with the inmates. Um, they're also taken out on the weekends. They have weekend puppy raisers who come out and um, they take the dogs from the inmates to socialize them in the community. So they have a curriculum of, of the different things they need to be exposed to throughout their training to be able to work in this kind of setting. Yeah. 
And well, tell us a little bit about the process. I mean, did you have to go through, I guess, the school committee and get, get um, and then request through needs? How did how does that work? We, <laughs> I went to at the time to the superintendent and mm -hmm. the special ed director, um, who um, at the time was Dr. Glinsky and um, um, Debbie O'Connor, um, and they approved you know this as part of our um, work. Um, and then the fun began with, um, I had to uh, contact needs, I had to go out and have an interview um, where they wanted to really tailor our needs to the dog. So this dog was trained specifically for the job she yeah. was going to do in this school. Wow, yes. that's um, yep. interesting. Which is, you know, very interesting. Um, you know, they want to make sure that the dog is the right fit for the client and like my personality as well as um, you know, meeting the needs and how we're going to use her here in the mm -hmm. school. Um, so it's a very um, intense and long process. And then we had to raise money. <laughs> so yeah. the fundraising began. Mm -hmm. um, she, I believe it costs, uh, needs about $25,000 um, from breeder to, you know, the end to <coughs> raise the animals, uh, to the, the dogs. Um, she, they charge the clients $9,500. So we had to raise money. I was able to, um, we did a fundraiser here at school, Pause for a Cause campaign, where students brought in, um, you know, donations and they got their paw prints put up on the wall with their name on it. Um, I received a donation from uh, the Kiwanis Club mm -hmm. and from the Lions Club of Reading and um, I, then we also got a grant. So it was nice that it all came together and um, we were matched over the summer and looks like a good match she <laughs> she's very serene as her name is yeah. um, tell us a little bit about your general observations of how the program has worked or any problems that you know you've had to sure. overcome um, she w was very well received we um, spoke with the uh, PTO back at the beginning or at the end of last year yeah. as we were you know looking to really move this forward um, you know knowing that we really wanted to have the parent support um, and have parents on board with what we were doing um, and to be honest the response was overwhelming with um, just support um, I had some parents help with some fundraising ideas um, we have not had any problems, knock on wood. <laughs> um, no allergies. We have not had no any allergies. We had a couple of fears at the beginning yeah. of the year, um, but I'm taught as part of my training with her how to work with students around their fear. Um, I was fortunate at the beginning of the school year to be able to go into each classroom to speak about you know, what her role is, how she's going to function in the school, um, how kids should approach her, how um, students should approach dogs outside of school. She's very different to approach than another dog, um, right. an unfamiliar dog. So there was a lot of teaching involved at the beginning of the year around um, her, what she'd be doing, and how students should be reacting to her when they see her. Um, we have not had any allergies, but because my role is such that I go into classrooms, we you know, have a plan in place um, should that ever arise. Mm -hmm. um, because she'll you know stay with the school as I'm here moving forward and um, just you know she, the atmosphere is different I think our culture and our climate she's really truly become a part of our school culture so the climate is um, just much calmer um, I don't know that it's her solely but I think that she does play a big part in just the overall climate and feel as you walk in the building and you know she greets students in the morning she, students see her in the hallway, they give her a quiet wave, they yeah. just really respond well to her. She's one of the family. They write, yeah. students write letters to her. I don't know, um, as you leave the office on the wall, I have some of the letters that they've written, but she has her own mailbox oh. in the office. Uh, students write letters to her, she writes them back, so that's and been a very also positive. And they learn the meaning of the word serenity, which is... <laughs> they do, mm -hmm. we did some teaching with that as well at the beginning of the year, and um, you know, learning academic skills like how to write a letter and yep. things like that. So it's been just, we've used her in so many different ways. And as we continue to use her, we find new ways to use her. So, well, that's it's, great. Uh, really interesting. Yeah. Thanks for having <laughs> us here today. Well, thanks for coming. And thank you, Serenity. Would you like to say something? Woof. <laughs> I guess not. She's, she's really serene. She's done. She's that tunnel. Wore her out this morning. <laughs> right. Yes. I saw you working pretty hard oh. today. Oh, there, there she are. is. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Thank you.
Do you guys, does everybody remember my name? Yeah. What is it? Patrick. Patrick. You guys remember her? No. no. <laughs> Hannah. Hannah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I've had you guys. My name is Kelly. I think what? I remember you. Uh, yeah. You yeah. guys definitely I had her last year. I remember that started with May. Awesome. Angelise. Yeah. Angelise. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. So, uh, you guys know we're from Change is Simple, and we're back, and we just want to review with you, because it's been a while since we were with you guys. The first time we are here, we talked all about your waste and how to reduce your waste, and we did some fun activities in the gym. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Wait, wait, wait. No, it wasn't in the gym, it was in the cafeteria. Yeah, it was the cafeteria. Sorry. Same thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then the next time we came, tell me, what do we do the next time we are here? Does anybody remember we were in your classroom? Working with energy. What, what do we measure energy in? What unit do we use to measure energy? Watts. Watts, that's right. And you guys went home and you did a little, did anybody look at their their home a little differently when they got there? Did they, they teach their parents anything? Yeah? yeah. Mm. My dad, I told him about like the light bulbs, like being efficient with those things. We have a whole new topic all about, what do we think? Water. Fish. So what are some ways that we use water every single day? We use water all the time. What do we use it for? Brushing our teeth. We brush our teeth with it. Drinking it. We drink it for sure. Wash our hands. We wash our hands with it. Uh, well, it was kind of like that clean up. Yeah, we clean with it. We shower with it. Oh, we're going to do a little activity right now. And I'm going to have a volunteer in a second. And my volunteer is going to brush their teeth for us. Just pretending. Oh. For about two minutes. Because we usually are, we're supposed to brush our teeth for two minutes. All right? But this volunteer is going to leave the water running. So you know when you turn the sink on sometimes, you sometimes leave the water running? I know that people do it sometimes, right? It happens. But we are going to measure and we're going to see how much water we actually waste by leaving that sink running. Sound good? All right, so I need a volunteer. I don't know. Do you want to be a volunteer? No. Just happens to work out because you are right next to me. What is your name? Daniel. Daniel. So Daniel is going to be my volunteer, all right? So Daniel forgot to brush his teeth this morning. So he's going to brush them for us right now, all right? So, Daniel, here's your toothbrush. You're just going to pretend. So you're going to go like this, get that tongue, right? You guys have to make sure get he gets them molars. super clean. And the whole time Daniel is doing that, I'm going to be taking water out of this bucket and putting it in here, and that's going to represent the water going down the drain. Sound good? Yeah. All right, we are going to start in five, four, three, two, two. One. one. Daniel, start brushing those teeth. <laughs> Sinks on. Sinks on, and the water is beginning to run. Ten All right, seconds. 10 seconds. Let's do the countdown. 10, Ten 9, nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, Daniel, you're done. Yeah. How much does that waste? How are those teeth? Terrible. Pearly white. <laughs> Pearly. All right. So we now have this huge bucket of water, right, which represents all the water that went down the drain. And we're now going to measure it and actually see how much water we wasted. We're going to be using milliliters in both of the activities we do. So I'm going to fill up this cup, and every time I fill up this cup, it is 500 milliliters, all right? So we're going to count out loud together to see how much water you wasted, all right? So counting by 500 is just like counting by what? Five. Yes. Yeah. so nice and easy. Here we go. 500, 1,000, 1,500, 8,500, 9,000. Okay, let's see how much we get here. 9,500. 
milliliters of water just wasted. Damn, nice going, Dad. Great job, Dad. Good job. I've got to use two takes. Oh god, oh, are you gonna do it all over again? <laughs> but that that's was... just brushing our teeth once, right? For two minutes, twice a day. But we need to brush they them brush twice a day. day. That's right. <laughs> so. That's two minutes. Oh, it could have been almost 10,000. I know, that's two minutes. That's one hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what was it? 9,700. You forgot the comma. I did not forget. <laughs> All right, so you have to brush your teeth how many times a day? Twice. You should. Twice. All right, let's see how much he weighs. In one day. Somebody help me with this math. Zero, two times zero. 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 Fourteen. Fourteen. Four down here. I can't even say it. Nineteen. Why are you Nineteen. 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 Nineteen
all kind of follow the same rules so if they were to move to another community or another state they're all along the same lines so we've aligned our programs with that so we know what the fifth graders are working on and we align this with their math and english language arts skills so as you saw the kids did a lot of math in the program mm -hmm. it was all about fractions and that's what they're working on now so we use the math and literacy curriculum and then bring them this interesting relative topic of the environment and and show them how they're having an impact on it how they're connected to it and you left them off with a little homework assignment too well, we so sure that's did. good yeah, yeah so we we always have a little <clears throat> bit of a takeaway uh, a challenge uh, something that they need to do to accomplish by the time we come back one of the things that was in that program you saw was we touched on the challenge that they had last time which was to lower their carbon footprint and they learned all about the different ways that kids create a carbon footprint and then we left them with challenges um, that were you know pretty simple for them to accomplish but it was all different ways that they could lower their carbon footprint and they had a chart in their classroom and they fill out the chart we give them the chart and then they fill it all out and then at the end of the year we take a look at them and see what classrooms really worked hard to do that so there's always a little takeaway with that and the teachers build on these lessons they reinforce them they create homework assignments mm -hmm. themselves we always do that but then they always will do a little bit more we just got a great assignment from a fourth grade classroom uh, the teacher had said <clears throat> if you were going to write a letter to the president write your letter and ask your question to your president or make a request and a lot of them had to do with the environment because we had just been there and she she mentioned that as one of the topics that they should be focused on so the teachers are fantastic so do you have a, a list of topics that you try to hit in the elementary schools over the year uh yeah so we in beverly um, the Cummings Foundation has funded our program for the next two years oh, great. for, for the, uh, the five elementary schools for grades three, four, and five. So each grade or each classroom at all three of the grades will see us four times, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the third grade classrooms will all see us four times, and those lessons lead up to the fourth grade programs, and then in fourth grade they'll see us four times, and then so on, fifth grade, same thing. So they all build together and they all are connected. So if you were to just kind of sum up what the overall objective of your program is, what would you, what would um, you tell us in 25 words or less? <laughs> <laughs> I would say that Change is Simple is creating uh, a new generation of environmental stewards, uh, kids that understand and know how important it is that we all protect our environment so we have a sustainable future. And it seems like you're also teaching them some great scientific method and uh, they seem to be uh, enjoying it so it's kind of nice to see yeah that. we always try to make it really fun for the kids we feel as though um, we come in with fresh faces they see us a few times a year and they we want them to enjoy our lessons and be engaged um, and give them a hands-on experience I think a lot of kids learn really well from a hands-on experience and we know that the teachers can't always do that they, all, they there's a very strict curriculum that they have to follow so it's fun for us to be able to give the kids a really hands-on experience the few times that we're with them and it keeps them engaged and passionate about the topics yes and you may be encouraging some future scientists and environmentalists and hopefully, so on along the way yes yeah we've, we've gotten quite um, quite a lot of feedback about kids taking partaking in their science fair or um, right. going into a, and doing some research on a few other things because of what they saw with us. So. Well, thank you so much for letting us uh, interfere and interrupt your classroom oh, no, today. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> we definitely enjoyed it, thank and you. Um, hopefully we'll be back again maybe next year for something new and exciting. Next yeah, time. anytime you want to join us, please feel free. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for inviting us here. This has been really exciting. Um, we didn't have programs quite this exciting when I was in school or even when I was teaching. So um, thank you, and I hope our, I'm sure our viewers are going to enjoy it too. Thank you for coming, and thank you for sharing our story with the public, and we hope to see you again soon in the future.